Well, howdy do, buckaroos. This is Joe Layton of Cowboys and Indians magazine. And today I'm going to be in the CNI studio with award-winning actor and producer Eric Nelson, who plays Enos, one of the young cowboys in 1883, the new Taylor Sheridan series that is a prequel to Yellowstone. Now, Enos starts out not really being too excited by the prospect of helping to escort a wagon train of immigrant settlers across country. But that's before he takes a shine to one of the lovely passengers, a lady by the name of Elsa, who just happens to be one of the ancestors of Yellowstone's John Dutton. Okay. And I, and I, I see, Eric, you uh, have your Emmy Award uh, prominently uh, positioned in the background there. Yeah, so, I've got... Uh, I, I take it uh, much like the character you're playing in uh, 1883. You're, you're not a modest sort of guy, are you? <laughs> well, you know, it's not every day you get to hang one of them up. So I spend enough time in this booth to, uh, to be able to keep it right there. So I remind myself of, of the hard work that I'm putting in. Well, you put in a lot of hard work in a really a short amount of time. Now, I understand uh, you were the first fellow to ever get uh, an Emmy, or the, the youngest fellow to ever get an Emmy Award for producing? I was, for, yes, sir. Yes, sir. Uh, I didn't even realize it at the time. And then afterwards, the Academy <laughs> came up and they're like, I just want you to know you've made history tonight. And and I was like, oh, you're being sweet. And they're like, no, really, you're the youngest producer to win an Emmy. And I was completely, uh, completely blown away by that. Um, and, and it still holds till today. And that was, uh, let's see, I was 20, I was seven years ago. Good Lord. And that was for? And that was for a series called The Bay. It was an online uh, digital streaming show, which I then later on uh, earned a supporting actor Emmy for um, years later. So the whole thing kind of came full circle for me. <laughs> <laughs> well, now you are riding tall in 1883. And uh, correct me if I'm wrong, but except for uh, the last whistle, which was about football, not, mm -hmm. you know, driving cattle or riding along with wagon trains. This is the first time uh, you've gone west. In a yes, role. sir, it is. Yes, sir, it is. It's my first Western. Um, and I couldn't have a better first experience in 1883. It's just been from top to bottom out of this world. And uh, if I did Westerns for the rest of my career, I'd be one happy man. <laughs> I'm, I'm fully, fully immersed. I'm, I'm completely in love with the culture and the people and, you know, the way of life and, you know, the history behind it, really. Um, so it's been it's been a dream come true. Well, now, we don't see but a glimpse of you in the first episode, but uh, in the, uh, the second episode, uh, you're kind of revealing uh, your true colors or all, all the colors on your palette. We see you obviously uh, take charge and, you know, self-assured in the saddle, you know, driving cattle and then, uh, you know, cozying up to uh, the woman folk, uh, <laughs> or one woman in particular. So you, you do have a very memorable lunch. Well, I'm going to stick around uh, with the, you know, the wagon train because now there are a bunch of new widows that maybe I can. Uh... <laughs> <laughs> I think Annis has had enough time staring at cattle out there on the on the plane. So he when he sees a pretty girl come along, it just rocks his world. And, you know, he doesn't even know how to handle it at first. But um, <laughs> I can I can tease that uh, we've got a, a really fun triangle going on between Tim McGraw uh isabel may and myself she plays elsa and obviously he's mr dutton um because he's a very uh, um you know um he likes to uh keep his little baby girl on a leash and um so when i come kind of fluffing feathers up a little bit he doesn't really like that so we've got some really fun stuff coming up <laughs> <laughs> now um when you were first approached uh, about uh, this project 1883 uh, what were your first thoughts? I mean, uh, did the name Taylor Sheridan mean much to you or was it a chance to play cowboy or all of the above? Um, all of the above, really. Uh, but first and foremost, my entire family and I were huge fans of Yellowstone. 
Uh, during the pandemic, my whole family caught up and watched it from, from A to Z. And uh, so when this came across my desk and I saw Taylor's name on it, um, it didn't necessarily give away that it was um, the prequel to Yellowstone, uh, but it did say it was Taylor's project and it was 1883 and I knew it was a Western. So right then I was hooked. I knew that I had to do whatever I had to do to get this job because um, I just loved his work so much. And then it didn't take me long to piece it together uh, that it was the prequel to Yellowstone. And then that added a whole nother element of, oh my gosh, please don't mess this up for yourself <laughs> you know this is the one if i were to ever pick um a project that i've done i've been doing this now for 17 years and this is the first project i can wholeheartedly say my entire family which there's a ton of us my entire family loves it and mm -hmm. and, and is a fan of yellowstone so therefore i know they will be a fan of 1883 uh, which is pretty neat because i don't get that often where we can all be behind the same project and you know they're all looking forward to it <laughs> well now um this isn't your first rodeo and uh, you have uh worked with some celebrated people in the past uh liam neeson uh and others uh but were you at all intimidated by sam elliott you know, <clears throat> I would I, I would be lying if I didn't say a little bit um, intimidated, maybe the wrong word. But, um, you know, he's got this aura and this greatness to him and his body of work just embodies everything I would ever want in a career. So that alone just kind of um, it's not like an unapproachable or on it. You know, you just feel. You, you expect them a certain way and you're almost nervous because if you get to know them and they let you down and they're not who you think they should be or, or who you want them to be in real life, it, you know, it would disappoint you. So I was cautious coming into it, you know, kind of tiptoeing to, uh, to get to know him a little bit at first. And I'm pretty sure the first day he wrapped his arms around me and gave me the biggest hug and said, let's do this, buddy. We're going to nail it. And so from that moment on, I was like, you're amazing and you're giving and you're kind and you're everything I wanted you to be. And I didn't need to be nervous around you at all. And he made that uh, very clear from the first moment. In fact, I have a small story I can share with you. One of our first days filming, uh, we were in a restaurant in Granbury, Texas. Uh, it's, it's my first introduction scene in episode one. And at the top of the scene, an extra is supposed to come in, pour us waters and then leave the scene. Well, she was so nervous because, of course, I'm at the table with Sam Elliott and, you know, she comes over and the first take right out the gate, she's shaking and she spills the water all over the table, all over us. And I was like, oh, man, this isn't good. You know, an actor like Sam Elliott, who's focused and trying to get this done and, you know, expects professionalism and, and yada, yada, yada. Um, I bet he's not going to be happy because he got wet and the whole thing with the whole, you know, take was ruined. And before the next one, he stops everybody. He's like, stop, stop, stop. He can see that this extra is in the corner, just shaking and nervous and, and, and is just can't believe she's got to come do this again. Well, he gets up. He gives her the biggest hug. He talks to her for about 15 minutes. I'm not sure what she says, what he says to her, but she comes back and nails it every single time after that with the biggest smile on her face. And that just showed me right away the kind of man that he is. He made her feel so good and so welcome and, and you know, that he was just a, a normal guy, just like she is. And there's nothing to be nervous about. And you've got this and, you know, gave her the whole pep talk and she came back and was phenomenal from that point on. So that's just a little look into to who Sam Elliott is. You know, it's funny, you know, there are certain people uh, who have your really badass reputations. And then, you know, you meet them, you talk with them, you spend like, you know, Mickey Rourke, you know, mm. I can always sit down and talk with Mickey Rourke for a couple of hours and it's, you know, a couple of guys sitting around talking and mm. I read all these stories. About, oh, he's so difficult. He's just, you know. I did a movie with him a couple of years ago, actually. Yeah, yeah. Right. Great, right. great guy. And then there are other people who, you know, you never hear a bad word said about them. Never. And Sam Elliott uh, is one, he has, a, he's, it's like he's walking around a perpetual state of grace mm. and he shares it with people. Yes, he's, that's the perfect way to put it. It really is. 
Now, uh, how much writing did you get to do uh, before this project? Again, I, I don't remember you, seeing you on horseback before, or unless I missed something. Um, well, before this project, <clears throat> I uh, my both my parents are, are are horse people. My dad was a thoroughbred polo horse trainer his whole life, and my mom showed. Uh, so I, I'd been around the culture. Um, but I think when I was a kid, they were so into the world of horses that it kind of made me go the opposite direction. Uh, that I wanted to have my own identity and my own thing. Um, so I got more into, you know, hockey and, and some other sports. Um, but then as I got older, um, and really when I got this show, to be honest with you, Taylor said, I'm going to send you to a two week cowboy camp before we start filming. Uh, to make sure your skills are up to par uh, for what they will be expecting of you on the show. Uh, and I actually got to come out a week earlier than that. So I had three weeks of training with Taylor um, privately at his ranch, riding horses all day long. We're riding cutters, we're riding rainers, uh, we're pushing around cattle, we're roping, we're shooting for three straight weeks all day in the Texas summer out there just sweating from morning till night in preparation for this. So by the time I did get to uh, uh, filming mode, I was as comfortable as I could possibly be and, and able to pull from, from, you know, an authentic place for this instead of worrying about my riding and worrying about, you know, wrangling cattle in an open field, I could fully so focus on my character because all that's just, you know, ingrained in me at that point. So that's truly the biggest blessing that Taylor gave us actors uh, prior to coming to uh, filming. And coming into it, I thought my level of cowboy was at 10. But I, I soon realized after working with Taylor that it was probably a five. And when I started filming, it got closer to 10. But it took some time. <laughs> <laughs> you know, if, uh, you know, this TV stuff ever goes south for him, you know, he could probably uh, uh, run the, the Taylor Sheridan Dude Ranch. Uh, oh, yes, he could in his sleep. <laughs> <laughs> well, now, um, you've done period uh, productions before. Uh, I mean, most recently you produced uh, The Inheritance on Broadway, uh, which is based on an, an EM4, different period, but a, a, mm -hmm. you know, not, not 20 first century, you know. Right. Uh, when you're in a, something like 1883, when you try to get into the character, do you ever find yourself thinking, you know, I, I can play this part, but I could have never lived back then. I don't think <laughs> I would have ever made it back then. Oh, sir, you nailed it on the head. We think that every day we're out there, we're like, how did these people do it? You know, it's just, it's mind blowing. You sit, first of all, try sitting in a wagon from the 1800s and travel 10 feet, let alone 10,000 miles. You know, it's, it's, it's a wood plank on some wooden wheels with no shocks and nothing between you and the wood. Uh, maybe you'll throw some shirts on there or something if, you know, when you're traveling, but it's the most uncomfortable ride you'll ever take in your entire life. And to think that these people not only did it across Texas, but all the way up to Montana and Yellowstone through rivers, up and down mountains. I mean, it's mind blowing. It gives me such an appreciation for, you know, I find myself complaining about some day-to-day -day task or something. And I'm like, Eric, just think about what those people went through. You know, <laughs> they couldn't even pee without thinking that something somebody could pop out of a bush and kill them or there's snakes or whatever it might be. I mean, there was truly no uh, there was never a moment of of calmness. It's when you're out there traveling every single second is a moment of <sighs> what's around the corner you know you're constantly your adrenaline and the fear and the you know of and the unknown is constantly there so there's never a moment of peace uh which again gives me so much respect for them and um you know it it makes my my crying baby and my nice one uh seem uh <laughs> seem like nothing you know compared <laughs> to what they went through um so i'm grateful I'm grateful that I can play that in our century and not have to have lived it in real century. But I also will say it gave me a whole newfound respect for uh, the land and for, um, you know, 
small things we take for granted every day, uh, uh, the weather and, you know, cause we film this show and 90% of what I do is all outside. And it's typically most of the time all on a horse. Um, so I'm, I have a connection now to these animals and even the cattle and the land that we're filming in. I mean, Texas as a whole is just, you know, one of the most beautiful places. And then up in Montana as well. Um, I, I just have a whole newfound respect for, for Texas, uh, and, and Montana. Um, it, it's been amazing to, to, to immerse myself in it. We've been very generous with your time. I've got uh, just a couple more questions. First of all, uh, the gunplay. Mm. Uh, in addition to uh, being trained or tutored to look convincing in the saddle, uh, did you have someone take you aside and say, okay, okay, now this is how you handle a gun from this yes. period? Yes, sir. Yes, sir. So we, uh, we were trained by uh, legendary gunman Thel Reed, um, who did all the gun work on our favorite movies, such as Tombstone and, you know, anyone you can think of, he was there. Um, so we, from, for many, many days, uh, trained in and out uh, on how to handle a gun, on, you know, the uh, different types of guns and the history behind them and, you know, really understanding and appreciating them for what they are and, and how they came into play back then, um, differently than, you know, what we use them for today. Um, so, yeah, that was a crucial part of the training process um, and even learned some fun tricks along the way. Mm -hmm. Well, finally, um, sometimes you will reach an audience uh, that knows nothing about your previous work. They will only know you for that work, no matter what you've done before. I mean, I remember uh, Chris Christopherson telling me that uh, he was uh, performing in, in Sweden one time. And uh, the guy in, in charge of the club where he was playing came back and said, you know what they were talking about in the audience? And he said, no, he says, I didn't know Whistler could sing. Well, Whistler was the guy who played in the Blade movies. And that's all they knew Chris Christopherson from. Uh, so uh, funny. Reba McIntyre told me that uh, when her sitcom was a hit, I'd uh, started playing in markets where she'd never toured before as a singer. Well, suddenly there was a demand for her to sing in, in person, in concert there for the first time. <laughs> uh, and I kidded Kevin Costner about this uh, before, while they were still shooting the, the first few episodes of, of Yellowstone. I said, yeah, you've done all these things, but you watch. Uh, there are going to be people who are going to see you for the first time in Yellowstone, and this is what they're going to know you for. Mm -hmm. Are you prepared for the, if, if 1883, first off, uh, if 1883 takes off the way I think it's going to, A, uh, that this is going to be what you're best known for, for years, probably to come. And secondly, you could probably kiss goodbye any hope of going out into public without some people recognizing you it's funny because taylor said that he grabbed me the other day and he looks at me he's like i'm sorry i'm like i'm for what he's like you're not gonna be able to go anywhere in texas without getting stopped so get ready he's like every restaurant you're gonna go into every everywhere he's like i know you got out of la to kind of get away from some of that stuff but he's like i'm sorry because everybody's gonna see you and they're gonna recognize you so get ready buddy and, you know, that comes with the territory without without the people. We've got no fans and we've got no viewers and we've got no supporters. So, you know, bring it on, world. I, I love it. I love hearing from people. Um, I love the support. It keeps me going, really. Um, and. Um, yeah, no, I'm 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 thrilled. I you know, the more people that stop me, the more people I know are watching the show. And that that means we're we're doing our job right. So I'm ready. <laughs> Well, I hope you are ready because I think 1883 is going to be a big hit and you're going to be a big part of it. Thanks for the words. Thank you, sir. I had a great time. It was such a pleasure. I'm a big fan of y'all.